What do the protesters in Iran actually want? There have been some claims that the protests are anti-Islam, or that they're actually about the economy, or that Israel and the United States are behind what's been happening. So let's try to clear some of that up. To properly understand what protesters are calling for now, it's important to go back to what and who started this movement in the first place. The current protest started after the death of Masa Jina Amini, a 22-year-old Kurdish woman. She was arrested by Iran's so-called morality police for improperly wearing a hijab and died while in custody. The Iranian government says she had pre-existing medical conditions, but her family has denied this, and eyewitnesses say they saw her being beaten by authorities. What came next were mass protests, initiated and led by women that quickly spread across the country. Images of women defying local laws by cutting their hair in public and burning hijabs in the streets went viral. This, however, did lead to a bit of confusion in some places about whether the protests were anti-Islam and were simply about banning the hijab, something protesters and Iranians around the world have made very clear is not the case. Whoever's thinking of it as though it's a war against hijab and Islam is very close-minded. They want the choice to wear the hijab, to not wear the hijab. It's about people's choice, people's choice to be Muslim or Baha'i, or Christian, or Catholic, or Jew. Some of the international coverage has also been criticised for implying that the protests are largely caused by, and are mostly about, economic problems. Again, something that many Iranians believe downplays the real reason why this movement started. There was a New York Times article that came out that put the protests down to economical crisis, which is extremely inappropriate and wrong. Nobody is out in those streets in Iran saying, revive the nuclear deal! Many protests in the past have been the result of poverty and the bad economy and a lot about corruption. But this time around, protesters are way beyond policy criticism. You don't hear any slogans about the sanctions, lift the sanctions, or about American policy. If you want to know what the Iranian protesters are actually calling for, all you need to do is look at footage of the protests and listen to what they're saying. The protesters are saying Zan Zendigi Ozodi. Woman, life, freedom, which actually originated as a Kurdish slogan, has become the signature chant of the protests. <laughs> Woman, life, freedom are the concept that the government has maintained its power for more than 43 years by suppressing. The bitter reality is that the Islamic Republic in Iran, of Iran has become an apartheid state for women who are segregated from men in the workplace, in classrooms and at beaches, are banned from attending sports arenas, riding bicycles and singing solo in public and have to sit at the back of the bus. They're denied the highest offices of the country. They can't be president. They can't be in any decision, major decision-making positions. They can't even be judges. It's important to note that while the protests may have been started and led by Iranian women, the movement has grown to include Iranians from all walks of life. This movement is a mass movement. It's the, the beginning of a revolution. It's happening everywhere in Iran, at every level, at every ethnicity, every class. Young students are openly screaming and chanting. There really is this groundswell of rage and anger and just exasperation with this morally, financially corrupt regime. Masa Amini's death just ignited this spark. It's evolved into a movement that's calling for human rights. Choice, freedom and basic human rights are at the core of what protesters are demanding. Iranians want a secular government. Where open and free elections are held, where people can stand up and have a voice, where people can stand up and question the government of the day without fear of being reprimanded. The Iranian government has been violently cracking down on the protest movement. Human rights organisations are reporting that thousands of protesters have been arrested. More than 240 have been killed, including at least 30 children. Reports of arbitrary arrests and the killing and detention of children are deeply worrying. Among these deaths were two young women who joined in the protests, Nika and Serena. And just like Master Gina Amini, they have become symbols of the movement too.
In the past, there has been hope amongst Iranians that they'd be able to achieve change through reform by electing certain politicians and trying to push through new laws. However, that is not what this protest movement is calling for. Whereas in the past they may have protested uh, for a reformation of the regime, and uh, now they are really calling uh, for the regime change. These people, they want regime change. They they don't want reform. Supporters of regime change believe that reform is impossible while the Iranian regime remains in power, because Iran is not a real democracy. They're saying down with dictator. Down with the dictator, death to the dictator, death to Khamenei are all chants that are being repeated by protesters around the country. Ayatollah Khamenei is Iran's supreme leader. That's a position that's appointed by a small group of religious officials and not elected by the Iranian people. Despite this, the supreme leader holds pretty much ultimate power over all aspects of Iranian life, including Iranian politics. This uh, political system in Iran is designed so that there is no change. Since the current regime came into power in 1979, the supreme leader and religious elite have blocked any potential changes that would weaken their power or go against their particular interpretation of Islam. Reformists, they failed. They couldn't do anything. Inside the, the country, accountability is impossible. Iranians have tried through elections. The problem is they can't really go to the poll and elect who they want because these men are selecting people who can run. Now, this next part is very important. Just because many Iranians are calling for regime change does not mean that they want foreign militaries to intervene in Iran. The majority of Iranian people, they don't want the intervention by the, you know, foreign forces. Protesters still want the future of Iran to be decided by Iranians. It is vital for the Iranian people, like anyone else, to have control um, and democratic choices over their country. However, that doesn't mean that they want the international community to do nothing. In fact, Iranians around the world have been calling for action since the protests first began. Until the women of Iran are free, we are going to stand with you. Jian, Jian, Azadi, women, life, freedom. This can be split into two different sections. For everyday people, the focus is on raising awareness and amplifying the voices of Iranians. I cannot emphasize how much it means to people inside and how much it matters, both outside and inside, when you speak up and post about what is happening in Iran. There are a few reasons why Iranians believe this is so important. The first is that the Iranian government has been cutting internet access and blocking social media sites, which makes it hard for Iranian people to share what's been happening. Despite this, some videos have found their way onto the internet thanks to workarounds like VPNs. By sharing this vision, people around the world can see what's happening from the perspective of the protesters, something that can be really hard to find, as media that's critical of the government isn't really allowed to exist in Iran. Plus, the Iranian government has been trying to push its own narrative, that Iranians aren't behind the protests, and that it's actually the United States and Israel that are pulling the strings. Beyond providing an alternate perspective, showing solidarity online and in the streets can have a big impact on protesters. Whether that's seeing their chants on international news, or seeing hundreds of thousands of people filling the streets in cities around the world. We are here to be the voice of the people in Iran. It is so important for us to be here. We are behind you all. We will never give in, we will never give up, we will never back down, and we will never, ever surrender. The most important thing, I really want people to understand that they are hurt and that, uh, they risk their lives as not being in vain. I also want those moms that they lost their kids and I really want them to be heard. These types of actions also signal to international media and governments that both Iranian and non-Iranian people are concerned with what's been happening, which can lead to more media scrutiny and can pressure world leaders to act. Many Iranians want to see more than just words condemning violence against the protesters. They condemn, you know, if they condemn, and then they move on to business as usual. Iranians want to see direct assistance being given. For example, helping the people of Iran access the internet. Iranian groups are also working with human rights organizations like Amnesty International to push the United Nations to set up an independent investigation. 
What they do is they document human rights abuses, they collect evidence, which is really important because that's what can be used to hold people accountable. It can lead to justice at the international level under the International Court of Justice or the International Criminal Court. This can lead to targeted sanctions against members of the regime. Putting sanction on um, Iranian diplomats is very useful because it would not disadvantage innocent people. It can also work towards delegitimizing the regime itself and make atrocities less likely to happen if the world is watching and paying close attention. Tehran still cares about how is it perceived by the international society. So long as the international community is focused on Iran and the Iranian regime is held to task and knows that people around the world are watching, it can't continue to commit these murders. A very powerful message to Iran's leaders that their crimes will not be forgotten, that um, the massas will not be for forgotten. Finally, one of the most important things that Iranian protesters around the world want people to know is this is about more than just what's happening in Iran. Human rights is universal and international community needs act collectively. So it warns other authoritarian regimes and other patriarchal societies to think twice about women's rights in, in their own country. If women in Iran can, can come out of this and walk down the street without being worried about being stopped, I'm sure that Af women in Afghanistan will see it, look at that and be like, we want that. You know, if we fight for human rights, if we fight for women's humans, human rights in Iran, we're fighting for all women around the world. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to our channel and also check out the International Politics playlist on our homepage.